Oh yeah, these are the in-ears according to my taste. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now, what we're having here today is Moondrops Keto. I think it's pronounced that way, I'm not sure. I first started calling it Keto, but somebody in the comments of another video told me it's pronounced like cat toe and I guess it's Keto or something like that at least. No matter the naming, they come in a decently sized box with a pretty girl on the front. It's usual for, for Moondrop. In the back you see some explanation about technology and the frequency response graph. It doesn't really matter. In the box you get these in-ears, you get a pretty nice carrying box. This one is like some sort of navy blue, it's pretty decent. There's also a carrying pouch, small one. Interesting thing that is uh, practical is the plastic box with several of the ear tips. Among those, you have memory foam ones. But also these silicone tips are not just your usual silicone tips that are like these, kind of soft to the touch, but a little bit hard in some ways. On Moondrop Keto, you get this really, really soft feel silicon. And just in my personal opinion, these are the very best tips I have ever used in my life. Okay, that's a big statement, but they are. They're so soft and fluffy that when I actually insert them into the ears, I'm not sure if I fitted them correctly because I don't feel any sort of pressure in my ear. But then they stay there very grippy because this silicone is so soft but grippy, it sticks to your skin. And man, it's just a perfect blend of comfort and secure fit. At least in my opinion, every ear is different, but I would love these kind of ear tips to become the standard or at least an option in all in-ear models. I love them. Aside from that, last one last thing in the box that you get is a secret weapon. I'll talk about this a little bit later. These are different nozzles that you can screw in uh, the earphones. Before that, I also wanted to mention the cable. As you can see, I untangled it quite easily. And that means this is one great cable. It's thick, it feels quality made, it does not tangle, and it does not have any sort of microphonics. Again, in my opinion, this is almost a perfect cable. And I say almost because you never know. Maybe there are some better cables out there, but as far as I know, this is the best in-ear cable I've tried so far. So as you can see, I'm so pleased with everything surrounding these in-ears, like build quality, fit, ergonomics, packaging. But let's move to the sound quality, because if that's not good, like, huh, sorry, nice effort, better luck next time. So I'll go straight to the point. Moondrop Keto sounds phenomenal. They have great sound, absolutely great sound for something costing below 200 US dollars. At the first moment I started listening to them, I noticed they are not aggressive in any way. They have smooth sound. And I immediately appreciated that. I hate when in-ears sound aggressive and clawy. Yeah, sure, that can impress you initially, but it becomes tiring very quickly. But not with these. They sound really smooth. But don't get me wrong, it's not at the expense of details. It's not the type of smoothness that comes from excessive warmth like some cheaper in-ears are achieving that. Tonally, these are slightly V-shaped, U-shaped in-ears, which means bass is just a little bit emphasized, it's warm, it's punchy, it's deep. There's plenty of sub-bass too, you, you can hear any rumble in the track. But it's precise, it's well-behaved, 
and it doesn't bleed into the mid-range. It doesn't overwhelm everything in its way. It's just a pretty darn good baseline. And the mid-range is so clear and crisp and revealing. You can hear if there's texture in the voice, you'll hear it. If there are some tiny details, strings on the instruments, transients, vibration tones, you'll hear it. And that mid-range part, upper mid-range part, is definitely emphasized. These are a little bit brighter sounding headphones. But again, somehow, it sounds perfectly smooth and nice. It's like everything is lit up, you hear all of those details, but they're never aggressive and too sharp. And when we are talking about highest spectrum, that's basically not responsible for any main tone, but more for air and atmosphere, and it gives the sense of space around you, that's again well present. It's not emphasized in any way. It's not giving any special sort of zing to the sound, but it's there, it's doing its job, and I wouldn't want to have any more highs than these are providing me. But tonality is not the only thing that we can talk about when we talk about sound. So, what else do we have? They are dynamics. They're pretty decent. These are nice and lively sounding headphones, especially because the bass line, it has enough juice. It has enough kick. It's not the most slammy bass line. There are in-ears that will do that quick slam and attack a little bit more aggressive and sound a little bit more exciting than these moon drops. But it usually comes at a cost of fineness and that long-term listenability. With Keto here, it's always a smooth ride. But don't get me wrong here, they do not have flat and boring sound dynamically. They're just not the most explosive in-ears that you'll hear on the market. But they have enough of pace and rhythm and fullness and they following the rhythm section of, in any song with ease. And yeah, they can produce that foot tapping experience. They're just not a champion in that section. But when it comes to the sound staging, separation, and placing the instruments, like imaging. Wow, these are something else. These are the best in-ears when it comes to sound staging and separation and layering and creating space around you that I've ever heard. That maybe doesn't say much because I've only listened in-ears in this price range, like up to 300 US dollars. I don't know how these exotic ones costing much more than that sound. But in its price range, for around 200 US dollars, these are absolutely fantastic. First, let's start with sheer soundstage width and depth. They have so much clarity. And tone decay is so nicely conveyed that you definitely, every time uh, there is a tone and then you hear a, an echo in the recording room, or it's like artificially added reverb, it doesn't matter. You hear dark background, then that clean main tone, then that clean and long after tone echoing around you. And you have such a nice sense of space around you and around the instruments that a lot of big headphones cannot really match. And these are in-ears, it's insane. I've never heard in-ears sounding this three-dimensional and spacey. In some moments, in some songs, I'll put it on the screen here, there is one, I don't know, is it a stick or some sort of percussion but there's this click sound in the recording that I kid you not, for the first time I listened to that song and I've heard it before, I really thought that something is clicking in my room. I, I turned to the right to look if something had fallen, like, I don't know, from my table or something like that. And I didn't realize it's from the song. It hits again and I'm turning my head again. It's so believable. 
And then I realized, wow, that's that percussion thing happening. And I actually heard it, but it sounded so much less clean and a little bit muffled and like so close to you and in your ear with other in-ears compared to this clean, crispy, thrown far to the right sound of Moondrop Keto. And at that moment, I was, I'm loving these. And I kept listening to a lot of other songs, anything that has acoustic instruments, like real space around the instruments, these convey that beautifully. Again, also other songs, pop songs that are not recorded in a true space, but that, that space is added virtually by using reverb effects and so on. That again sounds great with excellent tone decays and echoes and just spacing of the instruments. I was so amazed by that that I immediately wanted to check how they compare with other in-ears that I have and I like. And I knew there is no sense of comparing these with in-ears that I consider to be lesser in sound quality. So I went straight to my favorite, up until now, sub 200 bucks in-ears, which are NF Audio NM2+. And I realized these sound more muffled, they're closer, more inside of my head, Tones simply don't have that sort of decay and that sort of clarity and that clear placement in a 3D space with you being aware of their positioning. This is just more cluttered, more melted. Mid-bass part especially is more melted with the mid-range. And when it comes to the deep bass, these again cannot dig the deep sub-bass and they can, cannot create equal physical impact as Moondrop Keto. So it's not just that Keto is being analytical for purpose of being analytical, it actually has more sub bass, it has weightier bass, but it has cleaner mid-range, cleaner highs, everything is separated better, it has cleaner and longer tone decay, and the same story goes if I take any other in-ears, great 100 US dollars in-ears, such as Hidis MS2 or Moondrop Aria, for example. Anything that I've liked compared to these sound like at least two notches below. These are that good. And that brings me to the one last part when we are talking about sound fidelity, and that's this secret weapon that I told you about. Basically, you can remove the nozzle. You can see currently the brass ones, these golden ones, are mounted on the earphone. You can unscrew these, then you can take the other set and put it in. You have two pairs, one is made of steel and the other one is made of brass. And you would think like, yeah, what's that going to change? But it actually changes the tonality of these in-ears. They came with steel ones mounted. And I listened to them first. And everything I explained about tonality and about their qualities is when I'm listening to them with steel nozzles. And then I quickly switched to brass ones and I realized that they create fuller sound. Mid bass is suddenly fuller and that lower mid range is warmer sounding. That creates slusher and fuller sound signature. It's great if you like that. At the first moment, I thought to myself, wow, I love these. I love brass nozzles. But few songs in, and I actually started missing the steel one. And their pristinely clean mid-range. Everything was just fleshed out and clean in front of me. And I actually went back to steel ones. But I'll not waste your time talking about these. Try for yourself, decide which one you like better. It's just important to know that just by changing these, you can alter tonality a little bit to your liking. Maybe you like warmer, fuller, juicier, mid-range and mid-bass, or maybe you like it to be cleaner, more neutral, leaner a little bit. 
it's your choice, choose according to your preference. And this last part I'm going to talk about pairing. So I tried these with many different decks and they are so good, so transparent and so revealing that this three-dimensionality and clarity that I'm talking about, I got that with Hades DH80S that I recently reviewed. And these two paired together, it's a miracle. It's something that I can listen for hours. It's fantastic experience. If I moved to some less capable deck, and I don't mean it's like truly bad deck, it's still a really nice deck. For example, Dragonfly Black, or for that matter, any dongle that is not battery powered. These are pretty good, but they're not this good. You will lose some of that space and some of that three-dimensionality and clarity. And it will still sound great, but you will not be completely aware of their capabilities. So if you're already paying 190 for these excellent in-ears, think about them as an overachiever and get them the best possible source that you can. It's not that they're just bragging with these specs and new types of drivers and so on and so on. By the way, these have dynamic driver inside. I think it's like one dynamic driver, that's it. It's not this new mumbo jumbo like five, six, ten uh, drivers and so on. But wow, they do push the limits for what's possible in this price range. And they definitely pushed that bar a lot higher. It's not just like by a little bit, 5%, 10%. In my mind, these sound a lot better than my previous favorite NF audio. From now on, these are my new in-ear reference at this price point. And as I mentioned, even some bigger cans would have real troubles matching some of their sound qualities. With that, it's time to finish this review. I hope you liked it. If you did, click that button, share it with your friends, consider becoming a patron also, and see you next time. Bye.